Hi. I'm joined here with the one and only Pranav. Hello, Pranav. How are you? Hello. Hi, I'm doing great. Yeah, thank you. Pranav, where are you right now? I'm in the Qatar. Uh, I will play the Qatar Open, which starts in two days. You you already reached Qatar? Yeah, because the tournament finished yesterday and uh, I had to go here. Yeah. Okay, let me tell our viewers why we are doing this interview. Most of them already know it, but for some of them who have not been following, uh, Pranav, you are part of the team Offerspiel that won the European yeah. Club Cup. Uh, and I want to show a few pictures here because they are simply amazing. Uh, first of all, this yeah. is the one with your entire team here mm -hmm. uh, and the cup. And then you can see that <laughs> Magnus was uh, very ecstatic with this victory. Um, and yeah. uh, actually, some, some have said maybe this is the biggest uh, team tournament victory uh, of his career that you guys achieved together. And then uh, this picture where you are also holding the cup uh, and then Raunak yeah. with the cup um, and then, uh, you know, a very nice picture of the team camaraderie there. Um, yeah. And this, these photos just show everything uh, that, that, I mean, we all enjoyed watching it. Tell us how was it experiencing it over there? Yeah, it was actually great. Yeah. Playing in a uh, Magnus team, the atmosphere itself was very good. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was, a great opportunity and uh, I am happy that I did very well there. T tell us, how did this come about? Like, how did you uh, get the chance to play for Offerspiel? Uh, the thing is, uh, you know, Eric uh, Eric asked me, uh, he told uh, there is a chance to play in the club and I was like, okay. And then it was because of Eric and of course Magnus, yeah, because it's his team and yeah, so I'd like to thank uh, Magnus and Eric who gave me the chance and yeah. Okay, brilliant. Because there was this uh, tweet by Eric Hansen first. He said, one of the highlights of my chess career, the boys were a pleasure to play with. That's what he said. And I think Eric has been your friend and we have spoken about it many times that how, you know, the chess bras have helped helped you in your chess and you know uh, you, you've been friends with them yeah. for over the years now almost like four or five years now oh. uh, but what was very very special was this tweet uh, which uh, everyone enjoyed so much Pranav is buddy and pr <laughs> buddy is Pranav is there is there an uh, inside story to this no the thing is uh, in the chess bra chat if you see like uh, there is a comment I Put the exclamation buddy, then this command comes, which Magnus knew because he was watching the channel, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, after uh, after that, uh, two wins in the last round, Magnus was very happy, and I think that's the that's the connection. Yeah. Oh, so so in Chess Brass channel, if someone writes uh, exclamation buddy, it comes Pranav yeah, is comes buddy up. and buddy's Pranav, yes. Yeah. Oh. So that's how this came. Yeah. So, so why did Chess Bras put this? It's because like, uh, I don't know, Eric uh, normally call me Buddy Pranav and uh, it just stick on. Yeah? I mean, I don't know how, but <laughs> so it was so nice. In fact, uh, you know, every Pranav in India was very happy. Of course, this was aimed at you, but Magnus made this wonderful tweet. Um and what was very, very special was how your team, Offerspiel, uh, won this event ahead of many, many strong teams like Novi Bor, there was Super Chess, there was, I mean, some of the best teams in the world of chess played here. Yeah. Uh, and, and you guys won it with one point margin, 13 out of 14. The next team was yeah. 12. And the performance of the team members like Magnus played phenomenally on board one. Uh, yeah. uh, Raunak played brilliantly on board too, 5 out of 7. Uh, you yourself were amazing on board 4 with 5 out of 7. And Aryan was also very solid. Uh, and uh, there is Benjamin Halderson who also scored 3 out of 3. So, the entire uh, Christiansen, Johann Sebastian, 2 out of 2. So, very strong overall performance by the team. Yeah, I think the thing is uh, in the 42 games, the team lost only 4 of them. I think mm. 
so i think uh, yeah the team did very well and uh, my performance yeah i mean i i was, the start was not that good but somehow in the end i was managed to play well yeah this was your performance you lost to a uh, you won the first round but then you lost to a 23 58 uh, borna derakshani uh, but then you beat yeah. alex kristolovic drew with two grandmasters but what came in round 6 and 7 two crucial wins yeah. were so so important pranav because look at this match this was with uh, super chess and uh, your team was actually trailing at that point aryan tari yeah, had bro, lost was... and you had to beat jordan van forest and you you beat him which is not at all an easy task and the end game was very very special i want to go over that with you and then in the last round as well um your team needed you to win in order to win this uh, match which you did uh, which yeah. is where i think magnus then tweeted so these two wins were very very important uh, how did it feel to play this crucial role in your team's victory yeah i mean it was kind of nervous yeah but uh, of course magnus said uh, some things and uh, he gave some tips how to play and uh, how to be calm and yeah, it really helped yeah wow playing in his team itself was having a great uh, in a great team spirit there and everybody was yeah e- everyone was sort of together yes mm-hmm. yeah I, I, that, this was my question you know uh, i've been um, seeing that a lot of indian youngsters have got the chance to be with magnus in some way like you know at the global chess league uh, we had gukesh prag and arjun in his team uh, that yeah. was the uh, team there uh, and now you and raunak got the chance to be in his team in this european club cup so how is it to be in magnus's team if you could share like one or two things that you learned from him uh yeah i mean uh, like uh, whenever i was playing this like against jordan or something also he said the team was you know supporting us so just play just play a game and play fun and you know he was really cool he was not really and yeah it was very nice yeah because uh, it was also magnus first uh, team victory i think and uh, to be part of it was very great yeah yeah and, and i saw a few pictures later on in the night when uh, you know they were all together did you already leave by then or uh, because in few pictures you weren't there or or did or was there a party that was happening in the night ah uh, which pictures are you saying no i, it, I don't know yeah ah okay but did you did you guys enjoy like uh, in the evening after yeah, yeah we had uh, we had lot of fun and of course yeah i mean uh, we went to the uh, prize distribution and we had a lot of fun there but after that the guys had some fun which i was not there but ah. yeah <laughs> that's what i was saying <laughs> in some of the pictures you weren't there uh, but yeah uh, you learnt a lot i believe in uh, in this event yeah. and i think it is going to be very very useful for your chess career per se yeah, sure. uh, i want to go over these two crucial games uh, let's first begin with the game against uh, jordan van forest and uh, you beat him and it was a very topsy turvy game so and also a long one but i want to take you to the yeah. critical moment in the opening where here a uh, few games had been played in this position but jordan played the move queen b8 which was a new move uh, can you tell us what exactly is the idea of this move did you uh, feel at that point during the game ah I, i think it was just he was trying to get me out yeah he said it after the game queen b it looks uh, not a natural move and uh, i knew that he would try to do something like this but here i did not expect this but yeah i think my play was very simple here i did not see what uh, was doing with that yeah your your yeah, play was after... pretty simple you just put your pieces on uh, good squares and i think white's uh, position is slightly better for sure because of the a pawn weakness yeah um he, he he took a very concrete measure against it playing in the center 
queen c6 and here you you got a very sizable edge i think d5 itself was uh, he missed that uh, after e5 e4 there was d4 i think Ah. After which the d4 pawn is weak and white is better. Yes. You could have played something else other than d5. I think. After mm. that, I think I got an advantage. Yeah. So he could have done something else, but he played d5, and then we reach a critical moment at this point in the game, where you started your power play. Uh, here you first pushed your yeah. pawn to e6. and uh, you know pranav uh, this is something which is very very your style of play very concrete very calculative um did you already sense that you were winning like this position i thought i should be winning but i did not say it like clearly but yeah i, I thought i should be close to winning yeah. ah okay so queen d5 he offered a trade of queens and you came back yeah. this is very nice move because Now, if he takes with the pawn, uh, do you intend to? I think rook d two. Ah, first play rook d two, and then I'll and then there. then uh, take there. And uh, if he takes with the rook here, then maybe again you take. I think it's the same. Yeah. Same. If he takes, then rook d two, and if he takes with the queen here, then there is f five. Yeah. Nice. So he played here, and again you found this. very nice move queen a1 was it tricky to find this no i think it was pretty easy yeah, because i did not have any other squares to go yeah true and if you trade queens it's yeah. already like black is doing fine here or or yeah what? i think black is black should be able to hold this so queen a1 he took here fe6 and now rook d2 queen b5 rook d8 rook d8 and now why didn't you just take this pawn on e6 here i mean yeah it was actually like it looks uh, very easy yeah now but during the game i was thinking rook d6 some rook d6 c d6 and that position i was not sure but after the game of course the guy said queen d4 and it was almost winning yeah mm. which was not uh, that obvious to me and i was also low on time so i was I was thinking that after f5 and some bishop at six, as I played in the game, it should be a win. But he defended very well there. Wow, this was very nice move by you because if he takes, there is knight h5. I believe that you were yeah, intending threatening a, a mate here. And the main thing is you have now cleared the f6 square with bishop at six. Yeah, very nice, and it's very tough for him. You you mentioned that your uh, teammates uh, told you after the game that sort of queen d four here would have kept the advantage. Did you guys like analyze after every round each other's games or uh, it was just uh, conversations? Yeah, we like we uh, some days check the games, but yeah, we mostly uh, just uh, after the game like some guys tell yeah, I mean what happened. This I think yeah this. This was much uh, easier I think for me, but. Uh, Yeah, during the game, I thought I fly and it should be me. Mm. I missed uh, this queen b4 idea, which was very nice. He he took here and then bishop g7. Um, yeah, queen d6 check. Knight d5 and and actually the game went on here. Rook e5, knight c3 again. Yeah, good... actually the thing is uh, after uh, he played knight d5, I think it was move forty and we both got the time there and. Mm. I was already sure that it was. I mean, I, I'm not going to win this, yeah, because he defended very well and he has like forty minutes on the clock, so I thought it should be a draw. And did you see like But the situation to... of the other boards? Yeah, I think around this point itself, uh, Aryan lost against Diaz. I think. Hmm. But I was just trying to, you know, make my best chances out of this position, yeah. It must have been stressful to play because it's a must-win situation. Uh, yeah, actually, the, at this point, the thing was uh, in the last board, Prode was playing, uh, and he was uh, actually I think he was winning at this point. Yeah, so I mean, if he had won the game, uh, we would have tied the match anyways. I think, but mm -hmm. he drew the game, and yeah. 
so then then the owners fell on you uh, at that point here he took on h5 and you you played g4 now this already gives me a lot of stress you know you're opening up your king you didn't feel that no i i what i saw that uh, after g4 uh, he, i was sure that he would play the queens yeah because that's very obvious and uh, like if the rook ending is a draw it's a draw like i thought that was my best chance yeah because with the queens he will defend very easily i thought and so so I this, this move, was give me the best chance did you feel like this was a strong move or something like keeping the queens and your king safe yeah i saw this but i was not really sure yeah i mean he could play queen. he has a lot of time he can play maybe queen f7 mm. and i thought maybe he could hold a drawer and i thought uh, with the connected passes versus the a c pawn in the rook end game maybe have some chances but and so he gave I this think anyway those what was your assessment here you uh, objectively you thought draw or you thought some chances i thought i thought it was a draw because uh, the idea you played in the game i saw it and i was like okay if you play it it's a draw this rook d8 very nice yeah yeah rook d8 and rook a nice because now your rook is also tied down yeah and c5 rook a3 rook here you took the pawn he pushed you came back and you won now two pawns at this point yeah but uh, what was the feeling like at so this point i think uh, the game was almost uh, a draw yeah the other game and it's like okay if he finds uh, the king f4 idea then it's a draw because i cannot do much yeah you mean here yeah here but here it was very funny yeah, because he was started thinking a lot here and i thought maybe he wouldn't play king f4 because king f4 looked very obvious and i thought it was a post draw because of you can bring his king and take the pawn on h8 also if you try to sort of uh, gain an advantage by cutting his king off uh, like in the game here it seems to not work right because he takes yeah, g5 think... and king back i think Yeah, my king also is uh, very far on depot compared to the game. So yeah. here, you had the chance, but he played rook h7. Some hope you brought your king closer. It's still not winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had some rook a7 or something. I mean, wherever he moves the rook, it's a draw. I think rook b7, rook f7. To give side whatever. checks. Yeah. Like if you go but, here, yeah. he can give this check. but he felt that there is no need to shift anything because if king f3 now king h4 is there yeah and now rook f8 is a threat but you found this amazing move rook e2 had you seen it before yeah. and i think uh, yeah i mean it was quite obvious yeah because if i don't do anything you will give a check and play king g3 so i have to bring my rook and luckily it was winning i was not sure during the game if still it was winning but he gave a check and you went back but i think the crucial uh, move uh, here was uh, i think i'll ask the viewers to sort of pause and think what should white do because i think this is the key move yeah true that needed to be seen and yes the move uh, prana what was it i played i was rookie five yeah. yes rookie five and and the important thing is after king h4 it's like his king is also here but just this something like rook f5 or king f4 rook f5 is just lost because he is yeah. completely boxed in yeah wow this is very very pretty this entire uh, end game so you chipped uh, he checked you went back rook a8 and now rook e7 were you confident that you are winning now yeah after rook e7 i was sure yeah Because rook e5, I think he was planning this rook e5 a little trick, but still Ooh. I can play rook e7. I think. Ah, true. But, but after rook e7, it was clean, yeah. Because... Check, check. And the main point is, he whenever he takes the g h pawn, uh, there's already um, a check or maybe just g pawn moves starts moving forward. So yeah, king here and rook e6. 
King G6. Uh, again, nice trick by him. If you take it, the stalemate. Yeah. Rook F6. But of course, you you easily circumvented these tricks and you won after G6. Uh, yeah. What what did everyone do at this point when you won? Were they all, uh, were they all the waiting? Very happy. The team was waiting over there for your game, or they had gone. Uh, I was not sure for that game. Yeah, I, was, I mean, the, I think uh, the pro day. I mean, his game just finished, so he was there, and the captain was there. I think, but okay. but the but the boys were very happy after going to the room. Everybody was like very happy, yeah, because if we had lost the game, then uh, I think it's because we cannot play for first place. I think. Mm. I think it was very important to make a draw there to would, have a chance. Would you say this is the most important sort of team victory f- that you have ever made in your uh, career? Yeah, I think, I, I think yeah, it's the it's the most important yeah the most now. important win. This one, yeah, amazing. Okay, let's go to the last round against Oparin. Uh, again, a, a game which is so so um, sort of typical. What happens like with Pranav's games uh, here? You are slightly worse out of maybe. What did you feel like? Is it fighting position or you think you thought no, no, I'm worse? No, I thought I was close to lost. Yeah. <laughs> <in that> position, <laughs> okay. Think. But uh, but it it was not that clear. Yeah. Still, it uh, I had something and uh, and the, it was also the pressure. Yeah, because the last round, if they win, I think they had a chance of medal and if we win we knew that uh, we would take the cup so it was very tense and yeah so, so i don't know yeah because here i thought i was close to loss but but i did not see a clear way for him to play so i was just trying to play and why would you say that this position is losing is it because his bishop is dominant here and there is a lot of pressure on the queen side yeah, it's that, and also my pieces are very bad. I'm not sure how I'm going to get them out. And the way he played, I think it was good. I think he mm. played bishop e3, and uh, yeah. after f5, if he did not take on f5 and play something else itself, I did not see what to do. Yeah, he played uh, here, you went rook f6, and he took. Yeah. So instead of this, if you thought if he had just made some other move. Uh, but not so sure which maybe bishop c5 could be one idea yeah bishop c5 yeah then you were not sure what to do with this but he yeah. took and then you took back so you have now two mobile pawns but he he switched his queen over you pushed he gave a check king h8 and now uh, at this point he could have played bishop c5 right yeah, I think Bishop C5 was uh, was something I checked after the game and engine was saying some plus one or something, but it was not that easy yeah, here itself because uh, he had a very good position and now suddenly it's a little bit complicated because his queen is stuck on H4 and even after Bishop C5, I'm not sure how he's going to bring his queen out and why he is better. But mm. yeah, I think already he was a little bit tense here. Right, right. So bishop, uh, so you you would say that practically queen h4 was not a good move by him. No, I would say pro- practically e f5 was a bad move. Ah, e f5 already. Because if he doesn't take, I will not take on e4. Yeah, because then my he can play knight d2 and take on e4. And if I play f4, my g7 bishop is very bad. And I'm not sure how I will proceed forward. But after I took e f5, I just opened my position and I could push my pawns very easily. That is the main. And then he took here. You yeah. took back, and uh, he went here. Did you? Did you, were you a bit worried about this combination with rook d8? Yeah, I was thinking. Yeah, because uh, instead of b6, I can take, even take queen c6. But I was not sure during the game what was happening there. Hmm. Taking some rook d8, rook f8, but I was not sure what was happening there. But uh, then I saw that I have to take b6 and I was calculating this variation. Rook d8, queen d8, knight f7, takes queen d8, rook f5, I think I have to play. Queen c7, f8, c, and yes, some pawns, but I think it should be equal. But 
it's very unclear yeah here like i think i will play bishop f5 maybe mm. with side of bishop d but he will play rook f1 i think this was what i was calculating during the game uh-huh. okay very interesting yeah this is such an invalid position and i'm not sure position. what was happening yeah so but in the and, game uh, I, yeah sorry go on yeah and, sorry in the game also when he played knight e4 i i saw the i saw the move yeah and you you had already seen it beforehand this move yeah this is this because is i think great. his idea was if, if i move the rook i have to play rook up right and bishop c5 and i have to play rook g8 or something which is very bad and he thought maybe he was winning or something but hmm. yeah after the move it was over when you played queen g6 uh, he must have been stunned yes because suddenly it's like his position has become so bad his knight is hanging he cannot take because bishop f6 queen is trapped bishop is hanging yeah i think he was he was already uh, like not very happy with his position yeah, after i played this f4 so i think the momentum changed after that like after it took queen f5 before that he was very confident mm. and he played f3 but now you took knight f6 bishop f6 and this was easy to convert because yeah after this it was your bishops are just too strong too powerful he tried to get in with a check but hey what what to do now bishop h3 is a threat so he went here you came back attack the rook threatening e2 and he resigned yeah i think the first thing was uh, if i played e2 instead of bishop h4 he wanted rook b7 and and it was a little bit uh, it was a little trick i think rook mm. b7 bishop b7 take thinking of but yeah and then take here and he is better so but you played bishop h4 you found this uh, very nice move and with this actually your team um, managed to get a win against uh, as near as le grand shaker where uh not only you but also aryan tari won uh, and uh, it was very yeah, important yeah it was very nice yeah because uh, the previous match he lost and uh, to come back it was very nice yeah yeah pranav uh, these two games were very nice and that helped your team win but we mustn't uh, miss the round 5th which you played against novi bor guen thai dai yeah. one uh you are playing black here and you were completely in a minus position here yeah this was uh, the first game against novi bor and uh, at this point uh, like before some moves the position was around equal i think and uh, i have played this f5 which was not needed and uh, okay this position came and at this point the situation was uh, magnus won his game against tima and uh, we just had to make a draw yeah like in all the other boards and uh, ronak was uh, almost making a draw and my position was losing so yeah from this position i thought it, it was lost but uh, yeah why would you say this position is lost is it because of the weakness on d6 and a6 yeah i mean i like the pawns are uh, falling yeah and uh, he has two pass pawns which with which he should win easily i think hmm and in the game yeah he won both the pawns but 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 it's not over till it's over you took here, uh, he took here you went rook f7 so you keeping yeah. pieces on the board he took the a pawn as well rook f8 bishop b7 and here uh, you played your queen up to h4 did you already start sensing that maybe there's some chance with four pieces near the king yeah the thing is he played this bishop b7 yeah which uh, which just puts this bishop there like it cannot really help uh, to defend the king so but he wants to queen he had played some yeah but i had some time yeah because uh, he has to play a6 a7 and if i create my threats very quick then uh, I thought maybe something is there, and I played this queen h4. I mean, here the threat is bishop h3, but of course he he played rook c2, which was very obvious. And defending f2 because this is uh, the threat, like taking on yeah. h3. Uh, now you played queen h5, so now your threat is queen d1 check. Yeah. He went rook d2. He stops it, 
now you played this move bishop d7 which is like saying okay now you make your move uh maybe if he played a6 he played d6 here but if he played a6 yeah. um, what was your plan a6 anyway i would have played uh, rook f3 i mean it's anyway lost yeah but still uh, maybe some because queen e4 rook f2 i think it's lost anyways but i was i would have tried this anyway yeah, as as rook i played it f2 again. okay and if i take Queen d1, but I, I mean it's lost. Yeah, king h2, rook f2, a7, it's lost. But ah, uh, okay. So but in the game, he played d6. He played with his d pawn. Okay. And here I played rook f3, which which is of course lost after the gf3, like e f3 and rook d3, and you can just take the f pawn. But here he was getting a little bit nervous, yeah, because suddenly his king was coming under some attack. and also the thing is in team tournaments it becomes slightly tricky right because you're not just playing for yourself it's the entire team yeah true and there uh, the dynamics uh, you you start to get a bit more nervous yeah i mean the whole team was standing there yeah so like so it would be very tense to play yes so here uh, he took on e4 he still win winning you yeah, went still winning. rook a3 Is there any particular threat you have, or you're just stopping the a pawn? No, I'm just uh, threatening to take it, and of course, the threat I, I mean, played in the game was also there. But... So, so if he plays a six here, it's still okay for him. I think, I think yeah, still a six was fine, but I'm not sure. Maybe yeah, I mean, it should be winning, but the way he played, I think it's uh, already he played queen before, which was already I think. Like his advantage dropped a lot here, I think. Ah, oh, the check and queen b. Check and queen b four. So you gave a check. He went king h two, and now comes yeah. uh, the nice sacrifice, bishop h three. Yeah, bishop h. Okay, he he takes, and now uh, again a a very tricky move and a brilliant move, I must say. Uh, you must have liked enjoyed playing this move e four. Yeah, I, I mean, after e4 itself, uh, I knew that I will, I will somehow make a draw here yeah, because uh, he was very nervous at this point, and he had like I don't know four minutes or something here. So I was sure that he was not going to defend this. And and the thing is, even after uh, he should have played queen c3 here, I think. Mm. But even uh, with the best defense here, queen g5, queen a1, queen d2, bishop e4, and queen f4. I think, and I will take the e4 bishop. Still, it's not that easy. Yeah, I mean, mm. F two is weak, and yeah, pawns are not. He's not able to push them instantly. Yeah, true. He's still winning, but yeah, I mean, it's much difficult than before. I think. Right. So the the point also is that if he takes with the queen here, which uh, is a very critical move to four C. I think after the queen e four, queen g five, black is winning. Yeah, like yes, yes, queen g five. And you, your threat is queen g one mate, and yeah. if here queen g two, then you have uh, okay d two is anyway hanging, and you can check and yeah. take. Um, so and if he takes with the bishop, I think you and it's mate, yeah. Have queen e five, queen g five, queen g one. <sighs> Crazy. Okay, so e four is actually. Not just interference in his, but also a square clearance. You want the e5 square. Yeah, true. I mean, if I play queen g5 directly, I think the problem was h4. I mean, uh, I could have done queen g5, bishop g2, and then e4 also. But uh... sorry, queen g uh, here what? Ah, uh, here queen g5. Yeah, h4 and uh, white is winning. Yeah, clearly because queen g1, king h3. But uh, if he had played bishop g2, then e4 was there. Mm. Same, same. And the thing, thing is, here uh, the engine was saying the only move for him was uh, rook d3. I don't know why, but some some crazy line it was saying. Yeah, but I think takes maybe d7 is the idea. Yeah. But what is the point? D4. Like, why can't you play? Acha, like if you play this, then no, it's made. Yeah, queen f4. Oh, so yeah. so you want to play rook g3? So you go here, and then this yeah. is controlled. So now. now Okay, I think it's a great position, no, to give support. What is the only defensive move here, perhaps? No, okay, yeah, this queen e four nice. also, I guess. Queen e four, queen d two. Yeah, I mean it's lost, I think, because uh, 
your king is very weak and you're also exchange down so. hmm. i saw the only move the engine said was rook d3 which was 0.00 but i don't know about, about the other moves yeah it looks losing but... maybe there is also this defense queen e4 queen d2 and queen e3 i think it's and somehow maybe ah maybe so, yeah maybe yeah i i'm not sure but yeah so so you played e4 first he played queen yeah. d2 and now again a very classy move uh, giving up a rook takes check yeah after e4 uh, you have to play queen c3 because to also defend the h3 pawn yeah. okay. right that was the main idea and queen d4 also rook h1 etc so yeah this one right so here this this check and he agreed to a draw because if king h1 there's queen h3 and if king f1 you still go this check and if he goes here yeah. you still have this check 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 and it's a draw yeah true with this you drew the game and your team won yeah because all of all the games uh, were drawn and uh, magnus won the game now actually i understand it much better why pranav is buddy buddies pranav because you were so many games in the critical situation yes in this entire tournament yeah true fantastic well amazing uh, pranav uh, also uh, tell us a bit about offer spiel in general the team like uh, the management of the team how was it because you know not many indian players uh, get regularly to play at the european club cup uh, and i have seen yeah, many of the indian players play in the team of novi bor uh, like we have a long standing tradition with hari shashi vidit and many of them playing there uh, yeah. i i think uh, you and raunak are the first ones to play for a different team and it's very cool i think yeah nihal played for another team yes no? typhoon Uh, and also last year i i know that uh, i think arjun had played and and many had played but this is very recent yeah. now that indians are playing at european club cup mm -hmm. yeah so so how is how is the overall uh, feel for you to play in the european club cup and do you feel that such team tournaments help you to get better at chess yeah i think uh, team tournament uh, helps a lot in uh... you know like how you handle the pressure i think it's the main thing but uh, yeah with also magnus it was a lot of fun yeah because uh, we can learn a lot from him and yeah yeah it's it's i mean only... playing in the european club cup was uh, nice and uh, playing with the magnus team was even more better yeah that's the uh, absolutely absolutely and and uh, it's it will be a memory for forever for him and now you are sort yeah. of good friends with him buddy uh, so <laughs> that's also very nice <laughs> yeah sure. fantastic well pranav uh, congratulations for this but already you have a new challenge in front of you which is the qatar masters which is starting day after tomorrow and look at the lineup yeah. there you have carlson nakamura anish gukesh abdul satarov arjun um maksudlu and i mean it's a star studded lineup you would be somewhere around the 27 seed yeah, yeah. yeah 27 seed i checked uh, what is your aim for this event uh, i will just try to play good chess yeah i mean uh, the way i was playing i think it was good somewhere a little bit of change i have to do but yeah i think uh, yeah i think i'll just play my chess and see yeah and also uh, you are playing i love man after it no i'm not playing the grand swiss ah you're not playing the grand swiss so this is your trip uh, and then you come back after this event yeah and and lastly how does it feel to sort of travel alone i mean you have traveled alone a bit but i think this is one very long trip that you are, you are doing without your father who always accompanies you so how is the dynamic different Ah uh, yeah, it's a little bit difficult yeah because I have to do all the things myself. But uh, it's also good learning yeah to do everything by yourself and yeah it's it's different but yeah it's nice. Yeah, you you have to manage your uh, money, the food, uh, everything. It's is it complicated? Yeah. It's I think it's not so easy no to do everything. Yeah, but I'm learning yeah so it would be fine. 
learning on the board and off the board amazing pranav congratulations once again and wish you all the best for the qatar masters thank you